Alright guys, so we have made it out to kind of the middle of nowhere, uh, which is a good place to be when you want to shoot some photos. So obviously you can see here there's a pretty nice lane. I think I'll try and get the car parked up in the middle. It's very quiet here, so it's kind of like an industrial place where I guess people aren't around right now. So we'll try and do some photos here and then I'll try and go find a little space where I can show you guys how I shoot some video. I don't know if you guys want a quick walk around of the car, but this is the 2020 Audi S5 Coupe. It's pretty gorgeous and it's pretty fun. It's always good I find when I'm shooting a new vehicle to actually do a walk around and you can start to find lines really quick like obviously you can see kind of the way that the curves land on the car. How the light reflects off each car differently than the other ones. As you can see there's lines kind of forming on the hood there so really aggressive grill on this one. All right, so for gear, I'm using the Canon R5. We've got this cool little RF to EF adapter thing on there. We've got my favorite lens, the Sigma 35 f1.4. We've got some Amazon adapter rings because I've got these Nissi global filters. Depending on the light, I don't know if I'll actually need an ND filter, but typically I would highly suggest getting yourself an ND filter. And you don't always need one of these, but this makes for a pretty sweet, slick cinematic footage. So I'm gonna try and mount this onto the Ronin and I'll show you guys some of my favorite moves as we go along here. And we're gonna turn the ISO to auto so that it doesn't ever get too dark, hopefully. We'll see. We'll see what happens, you know? Yeah. I'm gonna shoot in 60 frames per second. So we're doubling our frame rate, so our shutter speed's gonna be at one over 125. Our aperture, we're gonna kinda fiddle with, hopefully we'll keep it low-ish, around two, two aperture, and our ISO will only increase if the light goes away. So let me strap the GoPro on and we'll go from here. This thing is definitely super awkward. So, I hope you guys know I love you. This is all for you boys. So uncomfortable. The lights turning out to be really nice though. So we got this little GoPro on. You can see you guys there. You're hanging out on the other side. All right, so I'm gonna show you guys a few of my favorite moves as well as when to use 24 frames per second, when to use 60 frames per second, and if you have access to 120 frames per second, you can. I usually recommend 120 frames per second to be saved for kind of handheld stuff because it helps you kind of keep it smoother. If you've got something like a gimbal, then it's not so bad to um, keep it at 60 frames per second. It's still pretty smooth, pretty nice. So let's, uh, let's shoot some B-roll. So one of my favorite shots is the pull away or even what it ends up being is that we're actually gonna pan the road first, and then this is gonna be like our entry shot to the car. But the best way to do it is actually just start on the car so that you know your framing is gonna be perfect. Then you hit record, and then I hold the trigger on the Ronin, and I pull back and do a downturn. This way, you'll have perfect framing when you get back up to the car. You'll notice if you do it the opposite way, you sometimes don't always nail it, so, although I did a pretty good job there. <laughs> so there we go, that's our entry shot. So another one of my favorites is the rim shot. And we're gonna start here on the rim and we're gonna kinda do a pull away and turn. And again, we're gonna reverse this shot so that in post, starts here and then we'll probably do a quick whip transition to get to there so let's focus on some details here so a little bit of ISO here hopefully you guys can see that okay we're just gonna grab some details and just go side to side now uh, yeah you want to avoid your reflection as much as you can going side to side here now the good thing about the side to side movement is that it kind of looks boring right now when I do it, but in post, and I should probably make a, a follow up episode to this one, in post we're actually going to do a cool effect that makes it look not as boring. So side to sides are a really good one, even if you don't have a gimbal, just do some handheld kind of panning back and forth. Looks really good. So I don't know if you guys can see here, I got zebra bars on. So zebra bars show me when something is overexposed or totally gone. So. We're gonna use our aperture a little bit, up to 3.2, just to make sure we've got everything in frame. Let's go back and get kind of a, a wider shot. We're 
we're gonna do that. We can even maybe lock the focus and then do a transition up like this. The reason we can do that is that we know we can whip to it or something. And let's see if I just walk along the side here, how smooth we can get it. Cause it's pretty not smooth over here. <laughs> so these pan movements are really great because you can always add some stuff in post. Another one of my favorite shots is at the rear. And I like to get really low on the rear diffusers here. Hit record. And then as we move up, you kind of push up on the gimbal a little bit and it makes the rear of the car look really mean, really big. Well, I've got some mad reflection here, so there's not much I can do on this one. But maybe we'll just center that car up as best as we can in our frame. Do a little push and maybe in post they won't notice. <laughs> okay, more details. Lock focus and just come across the emblem. Nice and easy. Nothing overly complicated there. Now what I'm hoping to get here out of this edit is really kind of like a 15 to 30 second. Nothing crazy. Just something that maybe a dealership can use to showcase their car. Okay, so we've got the outsides. I don't know if you guys can see on the screen now, but it's actually flickering. So we're gonna try and adjust our shutter speed a little bit to see if we can get rid of that flickering at all. And if not, that's when we might switch to 24 frames per second and see if that gets rid of the flicker. Oh, shit. sorry, man. You okay? Thank you so much. <laughs> Sorry for the inconvenience. Cheers. All right. So, switched our camera over to 24 frames per second. Gonna focus on the steering wheel. Start where you want the frame and then pull back in reverse. And then we can reverse the shot and post. Much easier. You know your framing is gonna be great at the end. Do a push. Hold the trigger and we're just doing a pan down. And then do a, a pull away here. And because we're back out, I'm actually gonna switch back to 60 frames per second. This gives me more to work with in post. I find it's a little easier to work with. There you go. And hopefully that'll stay locked on for me so I can do a couple little moves here. There you go, nice. Oh yeah, I threw you guys down. I forgot about you. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry I forgot about you. Then I left you in the dirt. One thing you always gotta do, make sure that whatever's on the system that you don't want there is gone. And here we can actually accentuate that screen. So. Let's actually do a bit of a pull on that. See, that's what's, that's what's such a beauty about the R5. You just tap on what you want it to focus on. And it just locks. It's amazing. Come on, Canon. I know I was a Sony guy. I'm sorry, but I, uh, I really, like, really like the Canon. It's a lot of work being out here, so... Yeah, I hope that you found this helpful, um, both with kind of how I approach the vehicle with the Ronin, with my settings, uh, work hard, stay safe, and I hope you enjoyed this, guys. <laughs> All right, now here's the best part about being an automotive photographer, is that you can have a little bit of fun. Also, that's holding up really well. 
So I'm going to actually drop a link down below for you guys on this car man. Ooh, we got some twisties. Any, ever, any left foot breakers out there? Yeah, boys. <laughs> this thing's sweet. This thing's real sweet. I really enjoy you guys hanging out with me. This has been a lot of fun shooting some video. Uh, driving our first Audi on the channel. Thanks so much Glenmore Audi for partnering with me on this video. For the rest of you guys, thank you so much for watching. I hope that you enjoyed this video. Please feel free to subscribe, hit the bell, like this if you enjoyed the content. And this is kind of what we do here, cars, photography, videography. I hope you guys enjoyed this and I will see you in the next one. Peace.